Next up, uh, and our final speaker tonight, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of love, but the main, the main event is the uh, one night only from Tom. <laughs> Thanks, Bernard. In my opinion, Bernard Brown, the best footballer in the country. About 10 years ago. We tried to get Paul Mannion for today, but he wasn't available. We're actually very similar, Bernard and I. He owns his own marketing company and he just bought a beautiful house. I work in a warehouse and I live in my honest bathroom. Believe it or not, I wasn't actually first choice for this speech. Kush is such a bitch, she wanted all to do it. She's my best friend, my friend. I was actually fourth choice. He asked Berno after all and he said he'd get back to him. A week later, his agent rang Kush and said he wanted eight grand. I seen him later on in the toilet, opened in one of the cards, and I said, what are you doing, Bernard? He goes, I'm taking me 10% of the parents <laughs> Then finally he was going to ask John, but he remembered he couldn't read, so that wasn't him. Right. <laughs> the last time John spoke in front of people, he got 40 hours community service. <laughs> and a 1,200 euro coin. <laughs> so here I am, the best man. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you all to the wedding of Karma Cushion and Arla Brennan. First of all, uh, Cush touched on it and Bernard touched on it already, but myself, Cush, and Orla, and a lot of the lads here lost a very close friend last week. He was built for weekends like this, and it's very tough to think we won't have him for another one. I'd like everyone to stand up and raise a toast to our friend Noel. We're loving you and we're missing you loads. For anyone that doesn't know me, my name is Stephen McQuaid. I'm 24 years of age. And I'm a pilot from the rich part of Casanova. For anyone that does know me, I'm Stephen McQuaid. I'm 33 and I still live with my parents. Don't judge me though, they're both 80. I'm just playing the waiting game. That house will be mine in no time. <laughs> they say when you're nervous speaking, you should picture everyone in the room naked. And it was actually kind of working, till I seen a woman with a big dick. <laughs> someone you don't like. And looking at these two, I couldn't agree more. I remember the first time I seen Kush, I think we were about 13 or 14. He was sitting in the corner of the Lower Lodge disco in a brown Adidas tracksuit. I think it was supposed to be black, but really was used with a cheap washing powder. The first thing I noticed was his massive head. I mean, he's kind of grown into it lately, but when he was a kid, it was like a wrecking ball. <laughs> like an orange on a toothpick. <laughs> if you were walking down the road and he stood still, buses used to stop at him. <laughs> he's the only bloke I know that has springs in his pillow. <laughs> when we were younger, the girls used to stand under his head when it was raining. <laughs> Coming home from Ross's stag, he was asked if it, if it could be removed and stored in the overhead compartment. He recently joined the aquatic centre with uh, Katie and Orla and he actually gave him a pair of metal boots to use when he was swimming the bottom of his body. It's so big, Rina still, still gets shivers when she looks at him. Speaking of Rina, she looks beautiful today, I think we all agree. I'm sorry I turned to know all those a few years ago and the junior certainly the people want. Larry was having an affair with Whoopi Goldberg. 
They were going to marry and all, but for some reason she wouldn't take her second name. I'm only messing, relax, Ronnie and Reggie. Berno introduced Bush to the group, and he had previous for, tr for trying to integrate strays. Bush was no different, just another one of Berno's stalkers. More of a fan than a friend, really. Anyone remember that Eminem song, Stan? Yeah? But Bush's Stan and Berno was Eminem. My tea's gone cold, I'm wondering why. I got out of bed at all. The morning rain clouds up my window. But I batteries for his ghetto blaster and we had to walk the long way home to the estate so his auntie's sister's mother-in-law's dog didn't see him smoking and when he wasn't out with you he was ringing you for absolutely no reason and then as soon as you went to talk he put you off going go on go on go on chill out and he's still the exact same today Coxie did a white collar boxing tournament with him and he said the hardest part of the train was taking five phone calls a day off of him. When we were younger, we did a few stupid things, and one time there was a 15-year-old degenerate. I'm sorry to the parents now for saying this, but he offered us a drag of a joint. <laughs> we took two pulls each, and most of us felt nothing, but not Kush. He was buzzing. He ran out of bushes. Free from desire. My obsession purified. Free from desire. Then some drug. Drug connoisseur, we won't name names, but he's looking right at me. Oh, oh Kush, that's not the way you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be real mellow. Two seconds later, oh man, I don't feel like it. He's walking around like a rascal. That was thankfully his first and his last experience. In his late teens, Kush went through an experimental phase and he was actually bisexual for a few years. This came as a surprise to everyone because he was never actually heterosexual. <laughs> but there's no other reason for making Kerry O'Neill, a girl, your best friend. And going on holidays with her and her ma drinking coffee and talking about interior design. <laughs> <laughs> then she got a Podge and after a nervous breakdown in the vortex, unfortunately for me that friendship was over. Push was back and he had a point to prove. He kissed three girls in a month and all of a sudden he was Don Juan. I was jealous to be honest. I had to make deal with a couple of the local bikes. <laughs> I'm not going to name names because there's a couple of them here today. <laughs> then, when Push was 19, he met the love of his life. Claire Young. But then she fucked him and he met Arlen. I'm only messing with Arlen, you've always been number one. Fifteen years together, except for ten months in the middle, when she gave him the elbow. I remember I was working as a shoe repairer or a cobbler at the time in the Blanchestown Centre. The cobblers are tough people, they don't show emotion. So I was standing there doing my magic on a pair of high heels, and one of the other lads called me and goes, Don't you want me over there crying at the film? I don't think so. I went off to the window and there's pushing his head in his hands. I was like, oh Jesus. So I went out to him with my apron on, put my arm around him, and he told me the whole story and I felt so sorry for Laura. <laughs> How she dealt with this mess for so long, I don't know. So I just gave him a one arm hug and then I gave the fingers to the two cobblers who were looking out the window laughing at us. Thank God she eventually took him back. Let's hope it's for good this time. I know Berno touched on Kush being an athlete when he was younger, but I think I see things a bit different. <laughs> Kush is very competitive, and competitiveness is good, but not when you're shy at absolutely everything. 
He was beating me once at pitch and putting hell on green. I was two shots behind and I knew I had to do something. So I pulled out my phone. He said, what are you doing? Watch this. So now I'm just having a look at Orla's holiday photos here. I put the head down like a dinner and bottom. Didn't bother him, teed off, ball straight into the carpet. <laughs> I ended up winning by two shots. <laughs> I think given the day that's in it, we need to mention Cush's battle with Hodgkins. It was a tough time for everyone, but we're very proud of how he fought it, and it's great to say he's in remission nearly seven years today. Yeah. The chemo was very tough. Given the size of his head and how hairy he was, he did a hell of a lot of shedding. But it wasn't all negative, we were able to dominate the hair. It's in Dublin Zoo. From his back hair alone, they lit a pole the next for a family of giraffes. And from his head, they were able to do a full body hair transplant for a orangutan with alopecia. Why she's afraid of me. <laughs> Your bridesmaids look great too. Number one, number two, and the lovely Laura. <laughs> Carol and Michaela didn't, they didn't really recognise you with clothes on. <laughs> Only messing Phil and Grant. <laughs> uh, well done to Orla's dad as well for walking her down the aisle. If she was my daughter, I would have wheeled her down a wheelbarrow to get rid of her quicker. <laughs> the first time I've seen Orla, uh, was actually on TV. She was on a European current affairs program. It was called Grease Uncovered and she kissed a man's arse outside a nightclub. Straight away I thought, this is the woman for my best friend. <laughs> I set up a little WhatsApp group with her friends to get a bit of dirt on her. A lot of it we actually can't say. Uh, but I have a bit of a summary here. She once headbutted a girl in the boomerangs who robbed her horse. She used to trim her eyebrows with a scissors. I think she might have done that today. She used to walk out of the shower with the towel around her waist until her dad had to say to her that it should be a bit higher. She was 21 at the time. And she keeps a fossil in her underwear for good luck. I think that's a private joke. I heard the hen was a quiet affair and one night away in rural Ireland, as was the stag, in Tenerife for four days. <laughs> the group, oh, actually, yeah, could everyone stand that was on the stag? <laughs> yeah, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Someone's in trouble. Uh, the group wanted experience 24 hours of every day, so we split into two groups. The normal Joes took the social hours, and the Amber Leaf crew took the unsocial. As the leaders of both crews, Cush and John, you can sit down. As Cush or Jer said, Tenerife is like Shutter Island. Its only inhabitants are Scottish and African robots whose sole purpose is to get as much money out of you as they can. We visited all the sites, Siam Park, the volcano, Masca Valley, and one of our favourites, Big Billy's Bump and Grind Notch. <laughs> Some of the lads even visited there twice. We also did the day in the life of the Lucky Lucky Man experience, where we got to see what it's really like to be a Lucky Lucky Man. We learned about the challenges they face trying to source good quality Ray-Bans in Rwanda, and what they like to eat between shifts, selling narcotics and other perishable goods. <laughs> we also got a chance to purchase some traditional African gowns. Kotsi liked his so much he wore a home on the plane. Kotsi, what a man, you can sit down. I was looking back through the WhatsApp group, Mick, and I think you've spent most of your time in some pub called Yates. I mean, you're doing promo for it, you can sit down. Reggie, you were great as always, you can sit down. We also sampled the local cuisine, and one of our favourites was Jamon A. Quaso. For you less cultured folks, that is a ham and cheese sandwich. Peter, Polly, you're both big and beautiful. And Peter, Polly, thanks for doing the intros earlier on. You can sit down. 
Jer and Soy won 1,500 euro in coins in the casino, but were due to get like two grand. Like the gentlemen they were, they threatened the female member of staff and they got their money. You two can sit down. Unfortunately, on the last day, Alan and Stephen had a little argument. They met two Russian men, and Stephen wasn't best pleased that Alan didn't get their phone number so they could stay in touch. <laughs> Lucky for us, there was a Scottish waitress there who broke up the fight. <laughs> you two can sit down. <laughs> Even though he was only active for four hours, before, actually, I skipped a bit there, didn't I? Yeah. How do you know? <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah. Even though he was only active for four hours before he fell off an infinity pool and broke his elbow, Noel McCann was, of course, far on side. Yay! He'll always be the top man. Judy Ross Marco, you had a bit of a night out in the Papagayo Beach Club. Judging by WhatsApp, it looked great, but Ross filled me in the next day and he said it was shit and all his feet. So you just three can sit down. Who's left standing? Brian, I knew it was you, and I have a little surprise for you. Remember Destiny from Big Billy's? Well, she got your plus one invite, but she didn't reply because she couldn't afford to fly. So she got in touch. Being the friend I am, I flew her over especially for you. Destiny, can you come out? I'm only messing. She got arrested in the airport. Come on, you can sit down. Not the brightest sparks though, only to get out you're dangerous. <laughs> Poor Katie doesn't stand a chance. I couldn't say anything bad about her because she's perfect. They say two wrongs don't make a right, but she's proof that isn't true. <laughs> if I had my choice, I'd have my daughter at my wedding too. And ideally I'd be marrying one of my friends. <laughs> I'd like to give a special thanks to both families, all our friends and everyone here today. It's been a tough few weeks, but it makes it easier to share with the people you love. Thanks to the priest who played a the priest who played a blind, I think he was actually blind, was he? <laughs> and the hotel for a great day so far. It's been an emotional day. I promised I wouldn't say anything nice, but given the couple of weeks we've had, I think I should let you both know it will mean a lot to me and I genuinely love you both. So let's stand up and raise the toast. <laughs> Here's the world of laughter and a happy ever after. All out push. Thanks, Stephen.